So I am here with Jolie Gorgian, a dear friend of mine. Thank you so much for taking the time. How long have you been at SF State? What have you been teaching? Um, yeah. Well, I kind of feel like I never left SF State because I um, went to, I did my undergraduate work at SF State and my graduate work the, uh, here, there. And I did uh, study at the Sorbonne. Uh, so I've been, and then I was a graduate teaching assistant. So that started in 2001, and then I've been full-time faculty since 2003. Um, and I started in the Department of English, and in 2015, I also started teaching in the Comparative and World Literature Department. All right. Um, originally, and uh, what were the original reasons you wanted to teach? Well, I actually never wanted to be a teacher. I was uh, painfully shy as a girl, and uh, I was not a very good student. Um, I, I, I got high marks, but I never felt like I was really learning and absorbing like like other students were, the smart, the really smart ones. Uh, so That's I and surprising. I <laughs> well, I went to school with a lot of really smart kids, so. Um, and, and then I think it was, I was dating someone and um, he wanted to be a junior college professor. And he said, you should be a teacher too, because then we could have summers off. And I thought that's the last thing I want to do. Um, but I also didn't, I had a degree in geology and I wasn't in love with the profession. And so I thought, well, I guess I could go to grad school and um, and see. So I did that and I started um, substitute teaching, which you know, is not the same as actual teaching. Um, and I got a job, a full-time position teaching French at a school I was substituting at because the French teacher walked out on the French students. And um, I didn't want the job, but I ended up teaching there for two years and it was, it was a tremendous amount of fun. Oh, wow. Some uh, similarities in our past, also motivated by summer vacations and also did a fair amount of substitute teaching um, yeah. before, I, before I came back to grad school, actually. So. Oh, um, painful. <laughs> fun sometimes, painful other times. I was bartending at night, teaching during the day. I would, I would oh make gosh. the joke that I uh, took care of the little kids during the day and the big kids during the night <laughs> and to the bar. Um, <laughs> not about me, to you, how would you describe yourself as a learner to kind of turn it around a little bit? Um, I think that I am a slow learner. I'm definitely a really slow reader. And um, I think that I, I'm one of the students that's like, what's the right answer? Mm -hmm. So I think that, that that kind of hinders me as a learner. But um, I have to write everything down in order to make it sink into my into my head and and also like see here and write it that's a really important part of learning for me and then i also think with learning with other students uh, mm. is is very helpful yeah interesting i'm sure that affects your teaching in lots of ways um what are some of the most exciting things about teaching uh, I think one of the most exciting things is that no day is ever the same and no class is ever the same. Like I will teach three English 114 classes. I have the exact same uh, uh, lesson plan and it all three of them are different. <laughs> so I think that's the exciting part is you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of variety and it has taught me that I have to be extremely flexible. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely a point about critical active learning and something that you and I have been working together uh, to develop over the past couple of years. But you do never know what students are going, how they're going to react, how they're going to participate, um, what you're going to get from them, which uh, right. makes it exciting. Exciting is a good word for that. <laughs> yeah. What has been one of your greatest successes or breakthroughs in remote learning? Um, let's see. I feel like I would have to, you'd have to ask my students that more than me, yeah. but, um, I think one of the things uh, this semester is definitely different than last semester. Since last semester, we had a number of weeks with students face to face before we went online. And then this semester we're 
online from the beginning. We often don't see our students. Um, so it's a totally different interaction, or even if we see them, it's so one dimensional. Mm -hmm. So I think last semester, a great success that I had that I've carried into this semester was just constantly asking my students, what do they want to do? Like, this is their class. When do they want to meet? How do they want it to be um, run? Um, what assignments do would they like to engage in? Um, you know, is, are the due dates good? Uh, whatever, whatever it was, do you want to just hang out and, and just catch up if like whatever they needed uh, seemed to be, I think, kind of this breakthrough that we still got work done. No. Uh, and, but we, I think that they really felt like in a time when they had no control of what was going on, mm -hmm. that at least in our class, they had control over some things. And if things were, um, you know, they felt overwhelmed that they could say, hey, we got to, like, please, can we slow down or can we just write one less assignment or can we mm -hmm. have one just be extra credit or, you know, whatever it was. So I think that that was really helpful for them and for me to just really listen. Yeah, that's amazing. I really admire that. Um, in thinking about the larger context of the society right now and what our, our students are going through and what we're collectively going through, the trauma that we're collectively go going through as a, <laughs> as a society and as communities, um, what ways do your, I mean, you kind of just described it, to be honest, but what other ways do your do teaching kind of meeting the moment and meeting your students where they are? Um, Let's see, I guess that and then the topics that we are exploring. Uh, so for 114, I have, I've never taught a literacy narrative. Um, so I was trained with the, um, you know, Helen Gelati and um, Deborah Swanson and Joe Kiros, who said like, you don't teach any personal essay writing in a mm -hmm. composition course. Like that's illegal, you'll be arrested and, you know, drugged down the hall. Um, in part because students already know how to do that and we want to teach them how to write expository texts. Mm -hmm. However, I think that it, over the past 20 years that's changed because of the common core and the way students are are taught now which is different than when we were in high school mm -hmm. and I think that they and I think that we're finding that they don't really know how to how to write about themselves because of all the strict rules and guidelines. So, um, so I, have, I, with the um, encouragement uh, of Carrie Hitchman and uh, Whitney, whose last name is escaping me, Lou, it, Lou I um, created a literacy narrative unit. And I worked with Nicole Brodsky on this. And mm -hmm. really, it was just coming from a place of being able to talk about the grading contract and make sure that they understood it early on, like really early on. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being, it was supposed to be two weeks, it ended up being a six week unit. Mm -hmm. And in doing it, I found how, um, how much it was like empowering students to mm -hmm. use their voice, to learn from each other, to share with each other, and um, to celebrate who they are. And I think that that's kind of a meeting the moment experience for them and for me. And then I had them, find a, um, a piece, anything, any type of text that has like non-standard English that uses non-standard English mm -hmm. and then analyze it and, and explain why it works. And that was really interesting because we got to share a lot of very interesting texts and talk about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then it's just, it just became this huge unit and I, they really like it. The students really like it and they're connecting it to like, the the current moment they're connecting it to being a college student to their families so that's been really nice and in my comp and world lit class um i just think that the text that i've chosen mm. really represents um the moment we're in now more than ever like i teach the film city of god mm. and talking about that and how uh, black Brazilians are treated by the government and um, the social structure there. And then we talked about COVID in Brazil. So it was very interesting um, for them to see a different country from kind of new eyes. 
Yeah, and especially because it sounds like you're so responsive to your students and their needs and teachers with our teachers in Exco, I want to emphasize more and more kind of the nature of inquiry. It's implicit in any pedagogy. Uh, as a teacher, after you know teaching here for quite a long time, what questions do you still have about teaching? Well, let's see, I still have lots of questions, but I think the biggest one I've been grappling with over the past few weeks is how to um, still engage students actively, have the pedagogy be active learning, active involvement with students. And I have found that being on the screen with uh, 20 to 25 students that I tend to talk way more than I normally would. Mm -hmm. and, and like, talking and listening to myself going, shut up, just stop, 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 just stop. But um, so that, then trying to discover ways to have the students talk and teach and, um, and new ways because we can't do the same thing, mm -hmm. same thing every time. So um, researching new ways, uh, trying to connect, you know, the check-in question to the topic that we're going to be working with and um, and then to the greater, you know, assignment. So everything is scaffolding and building. And I, I think I'm doing okay, but I think I could do better. So that's something I'm scratching my chin about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Jolie, um, for your participation with Exco over the last two years with me, uh, Kathy and I, yes, last year spent a lot of time together. And then you and I spent a lot of time working with Exco and the um, the teaching and learning community through CEDL and really expanding our network. So um, you're a big part of, you know, getting, getting the word out and creating partnerships across campus. So thank you so much for that. I wanted to say. Thank you. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. It's an honor to be a part of Exco and work with you. Absolutely. Okay. And we will be working more and more together about creating this uh, Exco English pilot class where um, more and more of the curriculum is based around students actually creating a class and then hopefully teaching it. Um, yeah. Yay. Because I know you have a lot of good ideas for that. All right, Julie, thank you very much. I will see you, you soon and enjoy you the rest too. of your day. You too. Cheers.